parents who've clicked on this, this is just like an extra, I don't wanna call it a bonus section, but I, the talk was made for students, but I wanted to give you some thoughts on this as a parent. So as a parent, uh, one thing I would say is so important is your relationship with your kids. The book that I talked about, my book, Parenting, Navigating Everything, is literally designed for that. The first six chapters talk about the idea of how do you get influence? How do you become a better parent? Parenting styles, discipline, communication, and time. Literally, that's what I, I can't more highly encourage you to do is to create that relationship with your kids so you can then go and actually walk through these larger conversations today. Uh, a few conversations though, just on parenting thoughts. The first would be you need a relationship for influence. The second would be modeling. Don't just tell your kids to do media, faith, and culture. You should be modeling media, faith, and culture to your children. You can't say, don't do this, but then I'm going to do this. Uh, I always laugh at a father who got upset at me when uh, his son was playing three hours of Fortnite, but what he was doing was watching three hours of a sports. It was a baseball game that night. They're both three hours, but the father was angry at what his kid was playing. In my house, what we've done is we followed something that I heard two decades ago from Tony Campolo. It's this idea, uh, anything can come into my home as long as you can justify why it should come into our Christian home. What this is doing is flipping this from you as a parent making decisions and it's teaching your kids to learn discernment. Around grade four, if you have a kid that age, you realize that's when kind of suddenly your kid comes home and says, hey, can I play this game? Can I have that song? And here's how it normally goes. You go, give me a sec. You go on your computer, you go to Google, you type in lyrics of whatever song and you read it and you say, no, yes. But at a certain point though, your kid needs to start making decisions. So what we do, did is we taught our kids how to open up a browser, how to type in the name of the band and the lyric or whatever else it might be, and then to read through it. And it was fascinating how many times we'd be reading through things. And my daughter would say, what is that word? And I'm like, it's a slang term for a woman's breast. And she would say, oh. And I'd say, do you still want that song? And she would say, no. But do you hear that? She would say, no. This was the beginning of teaching my kids to make decisions for themselves and not me as an adult. Like, when does that switch from grade four, grade six, grade 10? Like, there has to be this progression of teaching kids how to do things. This, like, intentional, strategic Christian life. So, relationship, modeling. And here I would just say, it is overwhelming. I fully understand that. Uh, I always laugh when I go into Home Depot or see their commercials. You can do it, we can help. Yes, it's true. Please use your pastors and your, your youth pastors and, and your, your speakers and YouTube and all these other means. I've given you three things that I hope will decrease your overwhelmingness. The first is the book. It is a 226,000 word, 16 chapter handbook for parents on all these topics. The second is my blog. And the idea of the blog is bringing as much great content as I can to one place. And the third is my YouTube channel where I'm answering questions that you, as a parent, ask me at my different talks. So don't do this alone. Maybe your church could start hosting monthly parenting sessions or book clubs where you walk through these conversations, but make sure you're journeying this, you know, ages and stages with other people who have maybe similar ages and stages of kids or even older kids. And the fourth one here is just keep current on culture. People often say to me, how do you know so much about media or music? Now, I also like culture today, but there are a couple of really great resources that you can use. The first is the cpyu.org. It stands for the Center for Parent and Youth Understanding. Walt Mueller uh, and his organization are fantastic at this. You can subscribe to their, I think it's a weekly email, and I forget what it's called, but it will just give you, like it will say, here's the top things on you know, inst uh, not inst well, on um, YouTube. Here are the top things being searched on iTunes, on Google. Like, it's just here's where culture is. And then article after article after article on everything from sex or, or drugs or, you know, faith. It just is the best content you'll find. The Parent Q is not only an app and a podcast and many things, but it again has similar content. And then access.org would be the third one I'd give you today, which is called the Culture Translator. It is a kind of a new player in this field. I think they've been out a year or two, but what I love is they do this, this email that it, it translates teen speak into adult speak. We need to understand what language is and what it means. 
I met a talk a few years ago and I'd spoken Friday, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. It was this long weekend. Pastor on the Sunday night says to the audience, oh, it's been a great weekend. I cannot wait to just go home and Netflix and chill. So a thousand people in the audience, every teen, every young adult bursts out laughing. And the pastor thinks, I'm doing well. And he starts going. The associate pastor beside me kind of pinches me and goes, what does Netflix and chill mean? And I said, kind of means like watch Netflix and have sex. The pastor's now praying. This pastor interrupts him and whispers in his ear. I watch this pastor, just the blood drained from his face. He apologizes to his church. Here's the point. Don't use words you don't know. And words change. I'm recently writing the chapter of my book on drugs and alcohol. So I said to my kids, um, so nobody smokes anymore, right? And they're like, everybody smokes. I'm like, no one smokes. They're like, everyone. And then my daughter goes, what do you mean by smoking? And I said, cigarettes. She goes, oh yeah, no one smokes. We're talking about weed. And I'm like, wow. Like even the wording of language for students and adults is very different. And her point was that most of her friends and most people in life are actually smoking weed. Again, we better be talking about those conversations. So keep current on culture and on that breadalmond.com, my site, I give you all of those things. And I would just encourage you in all of this to realize that you can do it. I mean, there's so much here. It is so overwhelming, but you can actually uh, be a great parent to your kids. And I, I would encourage you first and foremost to have this relationship with your kids to kind of as that foundation to walk through everything else. Thanks so much for your time. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.